All right, please uh, raise your hand if you have a question for Coach Lustig. We'll bring a mic to you. We're going to get started with Audrey in the middle here. Then we'll do Mark. Hi, Audrey Snyder with The Athletic. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Audrey? I'm um, good. Um, I guess since you've, you've been here, obviously, not that long, but what has been your early impression of the specialists you have to work with um, and kind of where do you start formulating your idea of the guys that you have in that room that you'll be working with? Yeah, I think it's hard. Uh, so far, I've seen mainly uh, winter workouts, conditioning. So, you know, at that position, certainly how big they are, how fast they are, how strong they are isn't as critical. Um, so I think a lot to be seen yet on, uh, on, on how I feel about the talent. But I, I, I love the competitive nature of the group. I love the depth. Um, I feel very good about what I've seen on tape from previous years. I think there's a lot of room for growth in that room. Um, I'm excited about the future. Mark. Mark. From Lions 247, a belated welcome to State College. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, this, it seems like the situation with you getting a job here came together pretty quickly. Can you take us through how that process worked to the extent that whatever you can tell us? And what's it like for a coach to be caught up in that whirlwind? Sure. Um, it, uh, it certainly happened fast. Um, you know, Coach Franklin and I have known each other for a number of years, um, from really my time in the PSAC when I was head coach at Edinburgh, uh, going back to those days and, and coming down to the, uh, the, nat or the state high school clinic here on campus. Um, so I've known Coach for a long time, um, and we've had a lot of mutual connections. So that happened pretty fast. Uh, I think on both ends, you know, he knew what he was getting with me, and, and I knew what I was getting, in, getting into. Um, so it happened fast. I think the hardest thing's on the family, you know, <laughs> like, but it happened fast. I was here before you knew it, um, uh, and excited to be here, you know, and excited to be back home. Uh, Justin. Uh over here, uh, yep. Daniel Gowan, Lines 24-7. Um, you kind of talk about having that relationship with James from your time in, in the PSAC. How did you kind of, like, how did that develop, I guess, over these past couple of years to get to the point with that comfort where you could make that decision so quickly? Sure. I think, uh, well, <clears throat> again, going back to being a Pennsylvania guy, I think Coach has done a phenomenal job of, of tracking younger coaches. Um, and I, I remember when he followed me on Twitter, you know, about 10 years ago, and I thought that was a really cool thing at the time um, that Coach followed me. So our relationship goes way back, and, um, and, you know, I've always followed him from afar and rooted for Penn State uh, inside, even though I was at other, other colleges. So, you know, just, again, excited to be here and excited to actually work for him. Back left, Allie. Allie, ABC yeah. 27 in Nittany Nation. Welcome to State College. Thank you. Um, I thought you had a question. Sorry, threw yeah. me off big time. Um, Coach talks a lot about the best in PA, staying in PA, trying to keep high school athletes here sure. and not have to go somewhere else to compete at a high level. Do you believe Pennsylvania has enough strength of, of players and of talent to compete you know, in that, that top four college football playoff type environment? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're asking a guy who grew up in Erie, Pennsylvania, so I may have a biased answer, but yes, I believe that there is enough talent here. Now, does that mean that we don't need to dip our toes across the country and, and, and especially in local regions? Um, we sure, we're, we're going to need to do that. But uh, there's talent across the state, and I've seen it on our roster already in the, in the morning workouts, so I'm excited about it. And I think, you know, for me specifically, um, when you're playing for your home school, your home state school, or you're coaching for your home state school, there's an added uh, responsibility, there's an added uh, accountability, and I think that, that uh, comes into play with the players as well. You know, they know their families, they know their friends are all watching. Um, so I think you get a little extra effort uh, when you recruit those, uh, those local guys. Over here on the right, Tyler. Hey, w welcome to town. Thank you for the time today. Thanks. Um, Tyler Donahue from Lions 24-7. I'm, I'm curious about the kicking competition that has a ways to go, obviously, and, and we just talked about it. it's only conditioning. But with Chase, a guy who's never kicked in a Penn State uniform, Ryan's only kicked in practice field, and I think Sander has three to four kicks at the college level. So what are you going off of right now as you try to lay the foundation for what that competition is going to look like, what you want to push these guys to become? How do you kind of base that off of a very limited track record of them doing much here on this specific campus? Sure. Well, I think that that position, um, a lot of it's objective, right? We're going to be able to track every single kick that they, that they, they make or miss in practice. Um, and uh, they're also, it's easy to give them equal opportunities because 
uh, offensively or defensively. You know, if you're a receiver, maybe you need to go with the starting quarterback. Or if you're a quarterback, you need to go with the starting offensive line. And it may not be quite as fair to evaluate those positions um, when they're with different teammates. Now, with kickers, you know, you can go out there and they can kick off of a, off of a tee, uh, a, a holder, and there's no other uh, variables. So we'll be able to get some objective data after the spring. I'll, I'll be able to tell you a lot more about that race after spring ball. But I'm excited about getting those guys out there. And uh, I, I think competition always breeds uh, a higher level of success as well. So I, I do believe that we have really good competition, good depth in that room. Back left corner, Andrew. Hey, Coach. Andrew Clay, WTAJ, Andrew. Nittany Nation. Uh, first of all, does your family miss Nashville yet? <laughs> uh, and secondly, Coach talks a lot about wanting a head coach of the offense, defense, special teams. Right. Uh, what kind of conversation was that like with you? And had you heard or had that conversation in previous stops of, of, of your head coach wanting someone for you to take kind of that kind of role? Yeah, well, uh, I'll go to my family first, uh, that part of the question. Uh, they're excited to be here. So we, you know, my wife grew up in Erie, Pennsylvania as well. So that's like snow capital of the world. So I don't think you can show us anything snow-wise that we haven't seen growing up. So we're, we're so excited to be back home and my family is as well. Um, in regards to your question of being the head coach of the special teams, um, I think as a, as a coach and as my growth has happened over the years, you learn to uh, be accountable for your area. So I, I wouldn't expect anything less. Um, I, I'm responsible for the special teams and it's all uh, gonna run through me. And I know that when good things happen, I know that when bad things happen. Um, so th that's certainly not a surprise and I really wouldn't have it any other way. Um, that's the way I look at it as well. And I think, you know, being a head coach for one year, um, has allowed me to just have a little bit of a different lens and uh, understand what's, uh, what's important as an assistant coach and how important it is to be a good soldier. Up here, John. Hey, Justin. John Sauber, Center Daily Times. Uh, you haven't coached the defensive side of the ball, and I think it's been about 19 years. How do you expect that transition to go, and how are you kind of preparing to switch over from offense to defense? Yeah, sure. Um, well, Enbro, actually, I ran the defense. so. Uh, that was a, a big transition and a long story, but it has been a long time. Um, I think I can bring, where I'm gonna be able to bring to the table in the defensive room is being on the offensive side in a lot of different systems over the last several years. I've been in NFL style systems. I've been in uh, old Baylor spread uh, systems. So I think I'm gonna be able to, I believe I'm gonna be able to, to help a lot game planning wise and say to the defensive staff, hey, this is not what they're doing. Uh, this may be an RPO or this may be a certain scheme or th they're checking towards, you know, to, to this look to get into this play. So the value that I'll be able to bring from the offensive perspective, I think, will, uh, will be helpful to the defensive staff. Up front, Seth. Hey, Seth Engel, Daily Collegian. Uh, Justin, in recent years, you know, Penn State's really used the nickelback position. Um, and for you to now lead this unit, have there been conversations, you know, maybe how much the nickel will be utilized, you know, come next season? And... Um, are there maybe some names that you've seen, you know, pop off to kind of hold down that? that yeah, position? I'm not not prepared to to, to uh, share any names right now, but I'll say that that is always going to be a critical part on any defense, um, just because you're seeing so many spread offenses. Um, now, people are starting to maybe trend away from that a little bit, but um, there's always going to be a slot on almost all, all offensive formations. You're going to have that nickel that's going to be matched up with them, so it's going to be a critical piece. Um, I'm excited to help contribute with those guys as, uh, as best as I can. Over here on the right, Daniel. Uh, Justin, uh, over the past, you know, during his time here, James has really put an emphasis on special teams in terms of scholarship investment, having you know, a full-time coordinator. Um, what does that mean to you, you know, coming into uh, a roster where there is kind of that infrastructure in place? Yeah, that, that's so critically important and, and was so critically attractive to me in terms of, of uh, taking this position here. Um, you know, ob the obvious reasons for me are personal from coming back home to being close to family and friends to being a part of this great university and this great historic program and working for Coach Franklin. But uh, another piece that's also very important is you always want, as a special teams coach, work for a head coach who values the importance of special teams. Um, and I can tell you, Coach and I were texting back and forth the other night uh, during the Super Bowl. And I think that's pretty obvious, the importance of special teams. and and how that can play a, a major role in winning and losing football games. Tyler. 
Yeah, I'm curious, you're so well traveled uh, as a coach. What, what will your recruiting responsibilities look like here at Penn State from a regional perspective? And uh, maybe parts of your background you feel like you'd be able to pick into regionally that maybe Penn State doesn't currently have a door open to? Sure. Um, so I'll, I'll be, uh, you know, Northwest Pennsylvania, my hometown, um, as well as Northeast Ohio, which is also, you know, grandparents that grew up there and spent a lot of time with the location of Erie and how close it is to Cleveland and Youngstown. Um, and then as well as New England will be a, another area for me that um, I've had a lot of experience, especially when I was my time in, uh, in New York at Syracuse. Audrey? Oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we've kind of seen pop up with the transfer portal, obviously, when you look at kickers and getting established specialists, do you have a philosophy there where do you think maybe it's better to get a portal guy as opposed to a four-year guy? Um, you know, a high school guy that you could then develop. Do you, where do you kind of stand on that if you do? Yeah, I think each university is a little bit different. I'm, I'm feeling my way through that right now. Um, but I think, number one, we've got to do a great job of recruiting the best specialists in PA. And uh, at that position, historically, it's very difficult to get a scholarship out of, out of high school, um, even if you're one of the best specialists. Uh, so I, I believe that we're going to be able to uh, recruit preferred walk-ons and do a really good job of getting really good walk-ons here that are down the road can develop and compete for jobs and if there's a hole somewhere the, the portal's always somewhere that we can go out to and uh, and supplement our roster if we need to on the right Daniel Justin you, you touched on your time at, at Edinburgh uh, that, that one season as a head yep. coach what was that experience like for you you know taking over that program turning it around and what are some of the lessons that you learned then that you know, really resonate now? Yeah, that's that's a that's a tough question. Um, my time at Enbro uh, was great. I mean, one of the best experiences I've ever had it was hard. Um, we did a lot, and uh, I think one of the things that that stand out to me is just working at smaller schools. And I've, I've really come up through this, the, you know, from Division Three. I started out at Division Three, and I've kind of worked my way up. But you learn the value of every person in the organization. And I think at Enbro, especially, I learned that, the value of the coaches, the value of the SIDs, the value of uh, the people that are taking care of the fields for you, the trainers, uh, the media, all those things. You know, you just get such a firsthand ex experience as a head coach, but especially at a smaller school where your hands are, are in everything. Um, so uh, I think really just the respect and appreciation for everybody involved in the program is, is the main thing that I learned. Mark? Uh, Justin, earlier you mentioned about rooting for Penn State on the inside. What did that look like over the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years of coaching? How did that start? Yeah, I think, um, you know, so as a, as a coach, you know, you, you finish up a game on Saturday and uh, you get in the bus, whether it's an away game or maybe even it's just in the locker room after and you check scores and Penn State was one that was always like on one of my favorites, you know, that was always checking the Penn State score after every game, no matter where I was at. Um, you know, it's just, and there's so many connections. I mean, I can go on and on about the connections to this program uh, that are friends or family, um, from uh, going way back to a guy named Mark Tate. I don't know if that name rings a bell at all, but he was a cathedral prep grad where I went to high school. Um, when I was in seventh grade, I was a, a ball boy and water boy on the sideline of Erie prep games. They went to the state championship his senior year, and I always followed him, you know, and so it goes all the way back to that for me. Um, and then, you know, having a lot of acquaintances through coaching that have worked here um, as GAs or as, as full-time coaches. Uh, so there's, there's quite a bit of connections. Any more questions? Go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, we, we weren't sure if we'd be asking you about replacing a punter too today, uh, but Riley Thompson got late word after his first season here with the program that he was going to have extended eligibility. I'm curious what you gain, and in, in, in that's weeks before, a month before you get to campus, but what you gain in having a guy like that back who's proven it here rather than having to find a new place kicker and a new punter in the same offseason. No, it's, it's huge. I mean, it's, uh, you know, at, at specialist, um, I think you can be talented, um, and you can do it in game in practices, but doing it in games is a completely different animal. And uh, you know, the mental game of that position is so critically important. Being able to handle the crowd, being able to handle the situations in the games, and having a guy that's got some uh, experience under his belt, and, and him being able to come back is is huge for us. And uh, 
I've seen guys take big, big steps going into their junior and senior years or the fourth and fifth years at, at specialist positions. So uh, expectations are high for him. Any more questions? Yeah, the, the, the punter I most recently worked with was a, a Ray Guy finalist, was an Australian. And uh, interestingly enough, he was a transfer from FAU. Um, so when he left FAU, uh, 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 Riley came in and replaced Matt. Yep. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Appreciate right, it. Thank you. thank you. Nice meeting you guys.